But then, you know, towards the, when uh, hardcore came along, it was uh, it, all of a sudden it was about uh, you know nuclear war and vivisection and shit. And uh, I liked the music; it was faster. I liked the, the, that part of it. But but I was starting to get lost with the. Uh, everybody seemed to be saying the same things. They got you know a lot of rhetoric. Um, you know, and I have respect for bands who honestly do try to get a message out there, but, and there are some, and there are others who are just, you know, saying the same old shit everybody else was saying, you know, and wearing, you know, like the anarchy symbol, it didn't mean anything to them, and, um, and I think really that's kind of what killed hardcore out in the first place, was just like this stupid rhetoric, everybody just going, you know, uh, fuck Ronald Reagan, um, you know, uh, all that stuff, and the music just wasn't, in, it wasn't enough, you know, and, that's what, uh, did I answer the question? What the hell are we talking about? Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, so, what, do you think it was a reaction to political correctness? What? Like punk, the punk movement altogether? No, I just think it was a bunch of uh, silly, you know, kids who wanted to dress up and freak people out and, uh, and you know, and say, you know, screw you. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, that's what it was for me. I just screw wanted to freak Screw everything? Yeah, kind of? yeah. 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 You know, I want to freak people out and, uh, if I get a good reaction, you know, like, I get chased by a bunch of uh, assholes in the Camaro. I mean, it used to be great, you know, like in the 80s. I mean, you're taking your life in your hands. It was fun. You know, you put on your shoes, you go out, outside, and the fireworks would start. You know, it's kind of a Mohawk. Well, you know, the reason why I, I came up with the question is because, you know, I always I, I watch the Mad Max movies, and I, and I see us, like, you know, I see you, and I think, okay, this is a, a post apocalyptic world in Mad Max, and how come everybody looks like Chris, you know? <laughs> Who stole Mad Max's style? I think, what year did that movie come out in? 1983. He stole our style then, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a good answer, Chris. Go, Sam. So, Chris, I read in an interview somewhere that one of your literary inspirations is Charles Bukowski. Oh, yeah, Chuck. So, um, no one had really written about uh, trials and tribulations in their work life until Bukowski did it with post office. No one... Uh, and factotum. What's that? And factotum. Well, that's what I was going to bring up, is when I read Punch the Boss, this uh, jumping from job to job, being treated like shit by different middle management guys, it resonated very heavily to me with uh, the fact that it was closely related to factotum. That's the way oh, you think I'm stealing from Chuck then, huh? Well I'm, I'm, uh, well, I'm wondering how much he influenced you and how much that book influenced Punch the Box. That's a good question, though. I really don't know. Um, my girlfriend said, you can't write about uh, two jobs you had because uh, Charles Mikowski wrote about it. It's, uh, and his jobs had. I said, well, so what? I mean, there have been a lot of people have written about the jobs they've had. Uh, um, John, John Armstrong's Wages, anybody out there read that? Well, you should. It's a really killer book, and it's about the shitty jobs he had, too. And we could ask him how much uh, he was influenced by Charles Bukowski. Yeah. The truth is, as, as, you know, as you know, Hank would say, I don't really know. And, you know, subconsciously, maybe? Uh, I don't know. I think we have very different writers now. So. so how much of his work have you read? Um, all of the fiction and all the prose and uh, some of the poetry. You know, generally not much for poetry, but uh, some of his is all right, you know. Regarding your tattoos. Oh, here we go. <laughs> As you know, the Uniter did a cover story on tattoos recently. Um, Instead, they put some hot chick on the cover. <laughs> well, it was inspired oh, in part. Inspired in part by your own remarkable uh, collection of ink. Hmm. And uh, not once did we ask if it hurt anyone. <laughs> good, good. And I promised you that I wouldn't ask that. So try good. this. Did you design all your tattoos yourself, or are you a patron of the arts? So oh, they're by idea. Yeah, I just, you know, I told the artist you know, what I wanted, and uh, they tried to uh, recapture it. Some were, some were uh, a success more than others, and some were failures. And, you know, and the more and gradually, I'm running out of space to try new things. But uh, <laughs> you know, I got a project going on now that's kind of exciting. And, and it's going to. Other, uh, I, I can't. <laughs> I'll show you on Facebook later. <laughs> well, I heard that you're uh, you're getting more ink done on your legs. Did you uh, have to, you know, shave or? <laughs> yeah, you know that was really weird. Um, 
I, I've got more appreciation for what uh, women do, put up for us now, now, no men, you know? Like, I mean, I, I, and I went in there and I had like one of my legs shaved and, uh, and it looked pretty damn weird and it was a lot of work and I, and I hated it and, uh, and uh, you know, even the tattooist was kind of snickering at me like, you know, he's like, the one who's one leg shaved and it just looked weird. And, uh, and I, but you know, damn if I was going to shave the other one until I was really happy. <laughs> Yeah, I only shaved like from uh, just above the knee down. I mean, there's no point in sh you know, shaving any parts that are that, That's how I feel too. too. <laughs> Usually, when I wear a skirt. <laughs> okay, one final one on the tattoos. <laughs> this is kind of an ironic question coming from me, as you'll see, but uh, do you find that you are discriminated against based on your appearance? <laughs> you should have seen me at the airport this time. <laughs> terrorist! Uh, yeah, terrorist. I don't know what the hell they're thinking. For some reason, I have to take my boots off. You know, they run up the middle of that scanner over it. I mean, they, anybody can see this. Just the little uh, eyelets that are setting off. Just go beep, 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 you know. Beep, uh, but no, boots got to come off. Mm. Serious, serious faces. So it's, and I throw away my yogurt because it weighs five grams too much. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's just that this that whole penny dictator thing. You know, and it really did get. It's kind of part of the same thing with punch the boss. You know, it's just about people who were in charge of. You know, you, you give people. Small-minded people, any kind of power, like you know, and then and they'll just they'll just use it to subjects, they'll just to make make anyone's life miserable that they can, you know, like security guards, ah, oh, the worst than cops, you know, oh. and uh, crap, well, you know, it's like uh, airport security guards. I mean, it's different from every airport I walk through, but uh, it's it's generally a real hassle. I mean, I've had some, I could write a book about that. And so, and I mean, like when, when you take little Frank to school and stuff, to have the par have the other parents adjusted to you? Oh, they're scared shitless of me. It's great. <laughs> yeah. But the funny thing is, because I get to know them during the year, right, and they learn that I'm not this this you know, this terrorist with uh, bombs in his boots, and you know, they and by the end of the year, you know, I'm, I'm you know on the least you know friendly terms with uh, with you know a number of the parents, not all, but a number of them, the ones who can you know work up the courage to speak to me or whatever. And then they, they get to have the fun the next year of watching the new parents bring their kids to school and they start off the same way, they're all freaked out. And you know, and then by the end of the year they get to know me too, right? So and then and then there's this larger group of people watching the people's parents' reactions to me the next year. You know, so and every year I say it's not true that you don don the security suit one day. Yeah, I would do it if I if I like you know, security for a gig. For what? Uh, oh yeah, you, I had a great time power tripping on every little motherfucker too. <laughs> so you, for one, for several hours, walked in the shoes of the security. I did indeed, Mr. Sh Mr. Sheriff. Did that bring out the inner dictator? Absolutely. I was throwing those little peeks out the back door. I, I was a uh, security at uh, was it uh, the uh, something to believe in gig at uh, at the playhouse, but I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't even get a uniform though. I didn't even get a. Sh I think I got a shirt that said security on the back. For me, those things are targets, you know. Um, no, actually, I, I was just there to get it drunk. No. Yeah. No. No. No, that's no, that is not true. We need photographic evidence, Mister Sure. <laughs> Okay, we got one more, one more question from Sam, and then we're going to open up the floor. Uh, uh, question from Sam. So in your heyday of punk rock, we were still looking at the stretch marks, the guys who had a guitar, a bass, a drummer, and maybe a front man if he didn't you know, hold a guitar in his hand as well. Nowadays, the tried and, uh, and tested punk rockers are, uh, are getting more experimental. For example, you're looking at Tim Armstrong, he's in the transplants, he's working with rappers, he's working with uh, electronic artists, and uh, Iggy Pop is working with guys like Sum 41, who are sort of this new age punk pop whatever, and uh, you know, Peaches, who's an electronic artist from Germany. So <laughs> I think you're going to see where I'm going with this. Yeah, so I mean, I should think about it. You might have given an indication right there. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'd be the last person to, uh, 
to, to say anything disparaging about you know Iggy Pop, but uh, 